being here tonight. Um, I'll try to be brief, as always. Let's go to my trademark right now. Uh, I want to share with you some things that have been on my mind and my heart for the past few days. You know, I've been thinking about fighting the good fight, fighting the fight for faith. And I've been thinking about this for the past, I don't know, week or so. Because I keep getting in awe of how good God has been to me and how good he continues to be to me. So I want to start by reading from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. There are a lot of good things happening in my life right now that I know are blessings from Him. And it's funny how when you know for a fact that whatever's happening, it's because God is working in your life. The devil comes to creep up. And tries, tries to knock you down. Um, so I've been clinging on to this word, you know, need of endurance. Last week uh, was my week of testing for my fitness program that I'm doing. And everything was so good. All the numbers were good. Uh, they told me that I'm in the top 10 of the, the class. Uh, you know, and I can tell because my clothes fit better and I have more endurance when we do the workouts and they keep making them harder and harder. Mm -hmm. But it's not yeah. that they're harder, it's that I'm getting stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but Saturday in particular, something happened that I could totally tell that that was just God moving. We had to run a mile. And when I ran it five weeks ago, uh, I was the last person to finish. It doesn't matter, because um, I'm, I'm the heaviest one of the group. And the time that, I, that, I, that it took me to do that mile, they asked me on Saturday, what's your goal for today? I said, I want to take one minute off. I, I ran slash walked a mile five weeks ago in 17 minutes and 46 seconds. So one of the instructors says, hey, can I run with you? Sure. And through all the way, she's coaching me on the breathing. Keep your heart rate down, do this, do this. We stop and I walk, catch my breath and all that. And they keep telling me, what's your goal? I want to take off one minute from my previous time. Well, we're doing really good because right now we have taken five minutes so far. And I'm, and I'm past the, the half mile mark. And just when we were re a little past the quarter mile left, my legs started to give in. <coughs> and I'm, I'm thinking, I gotta stop. And they keep pushing me and they keep pushing me. Every person in the class had already finished and they were all at the finish line waiting. And you can see them cheering and yelling. All of a sudden, like 10 of them start running towards me. And they get behind me running behind me, cheering me on. Keep going, you got this. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for that, I would have just probably stopped and just fall on the ground. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how I made it, but I took almost three minutes off yeah. from my original mark. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, you know, just seeing all these people coming to me I know God put that in their heart, you know, because if it was on my own merits, I don't think anyone would have done that. But every day I try to live my life in the way that Jesus tells us to do it. And I try to renew my mind every day to his word and continue to be towards people the way that he says we should do it, you should love your neighbors, you love yourself and all that. And, and 
And I can see that whatever, you know, God put it in their heart and what prompted them to do that was the reflection of Jesus that I'm trying to, to show the world. Mm -hmm. And so I know that that was him and that was very, very exciting and encouraging for me when that happened. Uh, so, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever is happening in your life right now that you think the devil is trying to get you, just hang in there because God is with you all the time. Mm -hmm. And we got to continue, you know, fighting the good fight and, and push through whatever's happening. And it doesn't matter, you know, the devil's going to try and knock you down. Uh, you know, just remember what God promised and, and surround yourself with people that can encourage you and, mm -hmm. and, and can be there for you and pray for you and, and stand with you in agreement with what God said. Mm -hmm. And the last scripture that I want to share is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to read verses 50 through 58. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must be put, sorry, must put, on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor, not in vain. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Keep pushing through. Amen. It's not in vain. Yes. And we're going to get what he promised. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Lord for uh, hearing our cries Friday night at House of Prayer, um, talking and reaching out to this community, this part of the state, and uh, those to the north, south, and east, and the west, even as he drew Angie in here on Sunday morning. Yes. Um, it, was, it was the Holy Spirit. I mean, it was just the Holy Spirit. I mean, she came, the pa pastor was obedient to the Holy Spirit, the service changed. What he had to preach on was what she needed to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim and, and the pastor and all those in leadership were just ushering her into that, into that and counseling her by what the, the, the counsel learned. Um, the love of Christ shown through the ladies and stuff. It was, it was just totally awesome. It was just totally awesome. And, and I thank God for that. Um, also, uh, lift up Cindy. It seems like Lee and, and Pastor's wife, Sally, mm -hmm. and Cindy are getting hammered. Um, <laughs> and I'm trying to discern what this is all about because Cindy's having trouble breathing right now. And, and uh, it's, it's that with the cold and everything else going on also. So and Sally's going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. So something's up that we're not seeing, but the Lord sees it, and I pray that he gives us eyes and discernment on how to handle this situation. Just set our wives free. Yes. Just set them free yes. and be healed in the name yes. of Jesus. Amen. 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 That's what I was going to say. Continue prayer for Mom. Um, she's been going through So I'd like to ask prayer for uh, my friend Isamar's baby. His name is Jeremiah. I call him the little prophet. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he's sick right now, something with a cold. So just for for healing. Yes. Um, you know, he's I think he's like three months old. So little, so cute too. Anyway, James, you were gonna say something. Yeah. Um, can you pull it to a lot? Go to the Lord tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for manifesting in this place right now, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to come here together and gather in your name. We know, Lord, that we're two or three are gathering in your name. There you are. So we know that you are here right now, manifesting and moving between us and through us and in us. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done for us, for all the promises that are fulfilled those that are still waiting to be manifested, Lord, because we know that you are a, a God of promises. That you said that you will never leave us or forsake us, Lord. You are with us at all times, Heavenly Father. So we bring all these needs to you right now, and we put them in your hands, because we know that in your hands, Lord, they will be taken care of. For all of those that are in need of healing, Leah, Sally, Cindy, baby Jeremiah. We put them all in your hands right now, Lord, so that the healing is manifested in the bodies that is shown in this world, Lord. We bind whatever it is that is oppressing them right now, that is preventing them from doing your will, Lord. In your mighty name, Lord, in your name, Jesus, we bind whatever spirit is interfering with your work. We thank you, Father. We pray for the city of Harris, for all the attacks of these people that are twisted, Lord, that are doing these things supposedly in your name, and we know it is not. We pray that you bring comfort to all of those that suffered a loss, and that you bring everybody together in your name, Lord, 
so that your power and your glory is manifested. We thank you, Lord, for the good things that are happening in our lives. We thank you for the for patience and the endurance that you give us to continue to fight this fight of faith. We labor, Lord. We continue to press through whatever oppression the devil throws at us. We might stumble, Lord. We might fall, but we know that you are there to pick us up, to lift us up so that we can continue walking down this path that you have laid for us. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for your word, the word that we speak into every circumstance of our life, and we change those circumstances, Lord, because your word, as it is spoken, as it comes down, like rain or snow, Lord, is not going to return back to you without producing its intended purpose. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us your grace. We thank you, Lord, for giving us your only Son to die for us, Lord, to get us closer to you. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to go out into this world and share your word, share the gospel, show people who you are, Show people who the God of the Bible is. The God that we know and love and serve. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We pray for all of those that are here, that you continue to manifest in their lives, Lord, and the promises continue to be manifested. And we also pray for all of those that are not in here, Lord, for whatever the reason, we ask that you continue to move in their circumstances. And for those that are not here, because they have not answered your call, because we know that you're calling your children to this place. Thank you, Father, for the freedom that you give us. Thank you, Lord, because we know that we are not bonded to any of the things of the world. We are free, Lord. We are free. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Okay, this Saturday, uh, well, actually Friday, uh, November 20th, and then Saturday, November 21st, uh, Kingdom House of Prayer in Ankeny will have their prayer burn, and we have the privilege to go and share uh, that moment with them, so we'll be doing worship, says from 5 to 7 on Saturday. I was thinking about this, and... Um, you know, this is not the first time that we've done this, and, and it's very encouraging to see all of these people from all different areas come together, because this is what it's all about, you know, this is what is making the body of Christ stronger, and when we get rid of all of these um, misconceptions, if you want to call it that, and we all come to understand that we're only there for one purpose, and that is to expand kingdom <coughs> on this earth right. and for his will to be done on this earth yes. as it is done in heaven. Yes. That's when things start to change and things yes. start to manifest. Yes. So if you can come, it's going to be good. Um, so, yeah.
the, the room's about uh, about three times the size of this room, and it's got sound system. We'll probably have PEMs, personal air monitors, and stuff like that. <coughs> we still go in the same place we used to. We still go in, but then we'll go up the steps. All, okay. up, all, wow. uh, you'll see everybody going in okay. and out. But on Saturday, uh, the Lord uh, directed me in the first hour. We're going to be focusing on Psalms 42. And I'll, I'll put this on Facebook also. And then on the second hour, on 2 Corinthians 3, um, glorying in the new covenant. First one's talking about Psalm 42, resting in the Lord. And uh, the second uh, hour will be in the 2 Corinthians 3, resting in the finished work. So. Amen. It's going to be good. Y'all can make it. Yeah. If you guys are available, come. You know how to hang out. <laughs> so, release it. I just want the abundance. I just want the abundance of His presence there. All right. Well, let's speak the word tonight. Will you not revive us again? That your people may rejoice in you. <coughs> I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease germ and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, and I am not conformed to this world and transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the Word of God. The Lord rebukes and devours for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. <coughs> Toby, can you take the offering, please?
step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that makes me is high Adore you, hope of our lives Stand with you Here I Hallelujah. 
One thing we always remember is how lovely He is to us. You know, to worship and bow down and praise God. To think about His goodness. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Here we are to worship and bow down before You. That's what it's about. To have a God that's all powerful and all loving. Think how much. How, how much did it cost Him? It cost Him His life. Surely, if He died for us, we can surely live for Him. Hallelujah. There's not, we can, we can just give all that we have because he gave all that he had. And you know, sometimes we think that the road gets hard and sometimes we want to give up. But let me tell you, there's a cloud of witnesses. There's a lot of them said you can make it. Just as Roberto's friends, you can make it, you can make it. And that's the way we should be toward one another. Sometimes when a road gets difficult and we feel like our knees are going to buckle, we need somebody that says, I'm with you, brother. I'm with you, sister, in prayer. I'm going to stand beside you. Don't give up. The race is not done yet. You know, sometimes we think that, that the reason we can't go our past. Oh, man, people think, I, I hear that a lot. Tim, I can't make it cost my past. Well, I said, what can you do about your past? What can you do about yesterday? It's gone. That's why they talk about in the Bible, it's casting a sea of forgetfulness. God doesn't keep bringing it up. Why should we bring it up? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we just want to praise God tonight. We want to take time to thank Him tonight. Hallelujah. Because that's what it's about. That's what it's about. If we bring the message tonight, let us think about the goodness of God. Let us think about the word hope. Because there's always hope in Christ. Hope thou in God. That's one thing you never forget. You're never going to run out of it. It's hope. You know, it's, it's always, it's amazing. When you, when you hear the angels in the Bible, you hear uh, Jesus in the Bible, you know what he said a lot? A lot of them said, fear not. Fear not. You know, I, I think that's powerful because when a lot of, you know, angels and all this stuff come, we don't know what's going on. But they said, fear not. Right. You know, and, and Jesus was such a common influence. That's what I love. I always love the story that that, that, that that woman had the issue of blood for 12 years. And you know what she did? She pushed through the crowd. You know, we, we've been in ball games, know how many people you can get in the crowd, but you know when somebody touched you a little different, somebody wants you, you know, in the midst of the crowd, because they was walking through there, and she touched it. She said to herself, but I could just touch the hem of the garment. And, and, and said, Jesus said, somebody touched me. The disciples said, what are you talking about? There's all these people pushing up against me. No, you don't understand. Somebody touched me differently, because that healing, that virtue went out. And she was trembling down. And I love how she calls her daughter. You know, how, how tender he was. And she, she just told everything. Yeah. That's what God will tell us everything that happened. Yeah. And the midst of all, everybody's listening. It doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter. It was the same thing with, with the, you know, blind Bartimaeus and different people. By the, you know, hey, hey, Jesus, come. What's this crowd about Jesus? Oh, you need to be quiet. You need to be quiet. Don't rough. I'm telling you what, I'm not going to be quiet when it comes to the Lord. You know why? Because I'm not embarrassed. You know? I'm not exactly. That kid's climbed up in a tree because he wanted to get a better look. What's going on? That's what it's about. Why are we afraid to proclaim our Lord? Hallelujah. You know, when he was on the cross, it's always fascinating. When he was on the cross, and you think about, you know, people are still jeering at him. People still, well, we'll believe you now if you come off the cross. We'll believe you now, you know? But, you know, he, he just said this all this year. He said, Father, forgive them. Yep. He talked about a tender heart. Yep. And, the, and the thief that repented, you know, the thief on the, said, man, maybe he is who he yep. says he is. Yep. You remember Pilate wrote above, king of the Jews? Yep. You know, and he said, man, he's, he's not yelling back at them. You know, he, he's not using that language. He's good. He said, Father, forgive them. Yep. Oh, maybe he is. I better catch this bus while it's going, buddy. <laughs> Let me tell you. You know what he said? You know, he said, remember me. He didn't, he didn't give a list of sins. He said, I did this, 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 this. Yeah. 
He said, remember me. Yes. And Jesus in all of his pain said, today, yes. not tomorrow, not next week, today you're going to be with me. Isn't that powerful? Yes. You know how powerful that is? Yes. Because you know you know somewhere there was a mom and a grandma and some people praying. Yes. Where, where's my son, my grandson? I don't even know where he's at. Lord, where he's at, save him. Touch his life. Yes. You know what? And that, and that young man, or however age he was, you know, he didn't, he didn't have a chance to pass out Bible tracts to do, but his life from that moment on has saved a lot of people. A lot of people have been led. Because you know why? Because he said it was not too late. It was not too late. It's better to get saved on your deathbed than not get saved at all. Right. You know? And that was a testimony, a powerful testimony. Right. And that's what it's about. Yes. So I've got to go to work here. <laughs> Y'all can be seated out there. I can get a little fired up here, but that's all right. Is that all right? You get fired up with the Lord, you know? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord. That's what it's about. It's about hope. It's about believing God. And I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 6. I want to start there. One thing about the Hebrews, and I, I got the Amplified Bible, it brings out a little more. I love that. Kind of expands things a little bit. Get a little more detail. <clears throat> Hebrews 6.18 says, This was so that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath. I love that. In which is impossible, impossible for God ever to prove false or deceive us. We who have fled to him for refuge might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast the hope appointed for us and set before us. Isn't that by appointed for us? You don't know, realize God has such a powerful plan for your life. Some, all we have to do is surrender to that plan. Yes. Because I tell you what, he's going to give us a future and a hope. Yes. You know, sometimes we don't realize why our life takes these directions and stuff. You know, we don't, it looks like a detour. But God wants you to learn something on that detour. Yes. I deal with driving. You know, I had to take some detours. And I tell you, take them in a semi is not the best. Uh -uh. You know, sometimes them detours get a little tight in there. Uh -huh. But you know what? I tell you, we made it out to the other side. We made it out, and that's what we have to realize. There's a future and there's a hope, and there's a better life ahead. Okay, This is not all there is. You know, sometimes we get in our life and we think, man, it's a rough time down here. But this is not all there is. You know, hey, we're just passing through those songs. Say, so we're just passing through. That's what's happening. And we got to realize, you know, I, I, as I was coming to church, you know, I, 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 I was a blessing to have XM Radio because you can get some, you know, you can get Christian music and listen to it all day long. But that song, The Lighthouse, oh, I love that song, The Lighthouse. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for The Lighthouse, where would I be? Right. You know, and just yeah. think, that light, somebody, you know, pe people think about, they think about life, you think about when he was down to Lois, and we think about, you know, when, when Jesus, when he was praying, he was praying for us too, when he says, pray for them that will believe, that will believe. Well, he was talking to the disciples, but those down the road, down the road, clear down here. <clears throat> you know, they have that song, when, when, when Jesus was on his cross, I was on his mind. And that's really true. He, he already saw you. He saw. I, I, I remember, I, I think back when, uh, when, I, when I came to the Lord, I was about 12 years old, and I remember the Sunday before a bunch came. A bunch came. It was a group. But I remember walking down there. Every, every Sunday, unless it was something unusual, <clears throat> our pastor, he, he always wore a robe, and he always, always had the altar open. He always did that. He'd come down and hold his arm every day, every single Sunday that we had service or, you know, like I say, unless it was some holiday or something. But he would always, because, the, you know, you never know if somebody's life is going to change that day. You want to always offer him an opportunity to come down to the altar. Yes. And I felt no pressure. I didn't feel like I, I, I'm making a display. I knew God. God was calling. And it interested in the Bible, so many times he calls people twice. Yeah. Yes. He calls their name twice, so there's no mistake, right. right? So we know who he's called to. Yeah. You know, when your mom called your name twice or started adding names <laughs> and, and put the whole name in there, you know who she's talking about. You know, I'm telling you, we had a lot of kids 
And mom might not get it right, but we knew who she was talking about. They start using that middle name, brother. I'm telling you what. They knew. They knew who it was. <laughs> but we're going to think about it. Verse 19, now we have this hope. I love that. Now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot slip and it cannot break down under whoever steps upon it. A hope that reaches farther and enters into the very certainty of the presence within the veil. How many times we look at the Old Testament veil, the mercy seat, you look how that God met us there. Think about your life, how he met you there at the mercy seat. How many times you cried out, if it wasn't for God, where would you be? I'm telling you, there's a lot of places you can be. Every time I come to the house of God on Wednesday or Sunday, whenever we come, it's a privilege to come to God in prayer. It's a privilege to take off. I just think about the glory of God, that he is willing to listen to me. Isn't that powerful? I, I mean, I just get overwhelmed by that. That God cares about all you think about the universe. You think about, you know, we, we look now that, that we're getting in space and the Hubble stick, and they can keep looking farther and farther out, farther and farther out and see all them worlds. So God did that. Yeah. You know, I know people talk about the Big Bang, but you had to have something to have the Big Bang, right? You know, I mean, you go about that. When God just pronounced and just spoke the word, how powerful. And it does, and it's in our life too. That we need to speak positive words to people and yeah. positive words about ourselves. Yes. You know, sometimes we run down ourselves. Yeah. I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, man, I tell you what, you've got the God of the universe inside of you. Yeah. How come you can't do it? Pain ought to get out of our vocabulary. Yeah. Let me tell you. You know, we, 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 I, I see so many times, you know, well, I can't do nothing. I can't accomplish nothing. Well, I tell you what, just start walking on the road. That's how you get there. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, uh, you know, what God gives us dreams. Yeah. And I mean, you know, in, in, in my field, I'll, I'll have my, my, my coat, uh, need my coat and stuff on. And people say, you know what, man, I, I really wanted to do that all my life. I thought about doing it. You know, well, I'm 70 years old now. I don't know. Well, what's stopping you? Yeah. Okay. What's stopping you? Do you want to have at the end of your life a bunch of regrets, thing I didn't do? Right. Yeah. And especially when it comes to the thing of God, you don't know if you do that, you don't know how many people you can touch. You know, you don't know. I mean, I have a world around truck drivers and stuff, places I went that I would have never probably gone. People I've been able to pray for. You know, somebody come up to me. I, I meet people all the time. Would you pray for me? Or, or one, I never forget one time this, this young lady, I was in a, a, a gas station and and, and I don't know, sometimes people feel more comfortable when you're a stranger, just kind of letting things out and know they never see you again. Yeah. <laughs> they just kind of, they just feel comfortable. Well, that's God. Where well, they feel comfortable enough, just share. And she shared and said, would you pray for me? You bet I will. Yeah. You know, I'm never going to tell somebody I pray for them and then don't pray for them. Yeah. I'm going to get on my knees and lift them up. Because yeah. you never know where their lives are at. That's why the best thing you can do is if you invite somebody to church. That's one of the best things. We're not talking, <coughs> kind of, where my voice? I've been in class all day. But the one, one thing about it is that, you know what? When you break, ask somebody to come to church, it's not a matter of reading a Roman road map and getting all the details. Ask them to come. Some people just need to be asked. That's all. You know what? I'll go with you. I'll sit beside you. You know, I'll be a friend. I'll pray with you. I, I remember there was a, 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 a lady when I used to live up here in the bus route, and actually her, her grandkids got saved, and then she started coming. But she hadn't been in the Bible for years, so I had to sit beside her, you know, and turn the pages so he got used to it. But that was, that was fine. It wasn't no problem. But, you know, there was a lady that sat beside and recognized her. And they've been friends for a long time. They just didn't realize they end up, you know, they kind of separate a little bit. But they had been friends when they was younger. Said, I'll sit beside her every Sunday. I'll help her. Praise the Lord. I didn't know that. You know what? When you start doing God's work, He just opens door after door after door. And some people, I, I just, I guess I did. I, I, one thing I, one thing I, I fail to kind of understand is why some people are so soft about the things of God. 
You know, it's almost like they're, they're afraid to talk about Jesus Christ. Well, I tell you what, Paul wasn't. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed who I believe in. Well, you know, Tim, you, you don't want to get out there and, and, and make a spectacle. Well, we're going to be a spectacle for Christ's sake. I ain't embarrassed, you know. I ain't embarrassed to pray. You know, because certain other people in, in different types of religions, they'll, they'll roll a prayer mount wherever they're at. It don't make no difference. Side of the road, you know, and, and, and it's time to pray. We're going to pray. How come Christians can't do that? How come Christians can't raise their hands up? You know, man, I'm telling you, you raise your hands up in some churches, think somebody's sticking somebody up in the back. Well, my hands went up. Man, somebody coming in the air. Maybe, you know, because if you get happy, you know, I, I tell you what, I got to get happy when it comes to the Lord. Why? Because I know what he's done for me. Okay? If somebody does something for you, you want to tell the whole world. You know, and remember, never forget what God's done for you. I know I say that a lot because it's true. I never forget that. Because you know what? God brings you along in steps. Uh -huh. Think about the where you were a year from, from you know, a year back. Yeah. A two years, a five years, a ten years. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Yeah. Think about where you come from. Think uh -huh. about your blessings. Uh -huh. Think about your, you know, having, having a car and clothes and all that stuff. Uh -huh. Now, I remember those days, brother. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, I remember those days. You didn't have to worry about, like one person said, you didn't have to worry if your car keys was in the other pants. That's for sure. Uh -huh. You only had one pair. Let me tell you what. You know, you wore and wear. Wore them in the bathtub, wear them the next day. I remember those days, man. I remember those days. I, I remember I didn't have a, uh, I, had a, I ended up not having a good place to stay, so I slept in the basement of the church as long as I washed the boiler. Okay? So I washed the boiler, then I moved upstairs and had a place at a bathtub. Slept on the floor. I remember that. He said, you be, I had to be out of here by 8 o'clock during the week. So that's all right. I had a place to sleep, and it was warm. I had a bathtub. I, I didn't have a refrigerator, but I, I used to get this cheese in a block, put it in the file drawer. Nobody's using it. Pull it out. <laughs> cut a hunk of cheese off. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let me tell you. Praise the Lord. At least I had a cheese to cut the hunk off of. Let me tell you, bro. I, mean, I remember those days. They say, well, Timmy got it made now. No, I know the one who made me. That's what yeah. difference is. Hallelujah. That's the difference right there. That, that's the difference. You know, I, I see people get up. You know, you see them on the Oscars, and they say a lot of things, you know. Not too many of them say, thank God. You don't, you don't hear that very often. I like to thank this producer now. It's all right to thank us, but I'm going to tell you, we need to thank him. Yeah. That's what we need to thank every day. When you can get up in the morning and eyes can open up, thank you, because everybody's eyes didn't open up. You know, it's time to talk about the breath. Being able just to breathe. I tell you, if you had trouble breathing, I tell you what, just to take a breath is a powerful thing. Hallelujah. I was thinking about the other day, uh, 2010, 11, I had some health problems, and I, and I fell, and I had to learn to walk again. You don't think about walking, do you? You don't really think about it. You just get up and walk. But when you can't walk, then you think a lot about it. Yeah. And I, I remember, I'm telling you, I, I, I share some things that, twice, but that's all right. Still a good story. <laughs> But, but I remember I was in the hospital over Lutheran, and, and they had, I finally got to a walker, which was fine. Then the nurse said, hey, Tim, you got to learn what, to walk without this walker before we let you go home. So you got you to gotta walk a couple of steps to be able to get in your house. And she said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll grab hold of you. I'll grab hold of you so you lean on me when we walk it. Is that a good idea? You know, I ain't a little fella, let me tell you. You know? I mean, if I stood between, beside olive oil, we look like a number 10, let me tell you. That's, that's what we look like, let me tell you. And, I'm, 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 and you're going to hold me up? I said, we're both going down. I said, no, I got a way to brace it. And I'm telling you what, she took that walker away, and I'm thinking, we're going down. But you know what? We didn't go down. We made a few steps. All right, we on that road. Time I got out of there, we still walking. We still walking. And that was 2010, 11, and we still going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Let me tell you. God is good. Oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you, friends. When it comes back to, I got to share another scripture. Let me tell you what, but when it comes back to God, tell you what, never lose hope when it comes to God. I want to go to Isaiah. This is always a, a, a very common scripture, but I'll tell you, it's still powerful. That's one thing about the word of God. You know, isn't it interesting, when Jesus was walking the road to Emmaus, 
you know, he starts sharing the script, starts sharing that word because he was the word. Yeah. And it said, didn't it burn in us? There's something about the word of God. It's not just a story. You know, people, people say, well, it's just a story. I tell you what, it don't start once upon a time. That's what it don't start that way. The Bible starts in the beginning God. It's God's word. And it'll change your life. That's what it does. You know, I've read Little Red Riding Hood and all that, but they didn't change my life. The three bears didn't change my life. But the word of God changed my life. Hallelujah. 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 Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. Oh, man. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, I love this, does not faint or grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and weary, and to him who has no might. Sometimes you're down there where you don't have no might. You can't get up if you try. But hallelujah, we're looking toward him. The one who has no might, guess what he does? He increases, increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it to abound. Yes. Hallelujah. Even you shall faint and be weary. Yes. And selected young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But oh, here's the, here's the key right here. Here's the key that turns the door, turns the lock and opens things up for those who would believe. But those who wait for the Lord, uh -huh. hallelujah, yeah. for those who wait for the Lord, yes, Lord. who expect, look uh -huh. for, and hope in him, yeah. hallelujah, who expect, think about it, you expect, you know, hey, Christmas is coming up, your kids expect, they expect, I'm telling you, Santa Claus visitor. Well, we ain't talking about Santa Claus, we talking about Jesus Christ, that's what we talking about, hallelujah, who expect, look for and hope in him yes. shall change and renew their strength and power. Yes. They shall lift up their, their wings and mount up close to God. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. The more time you spend with God, the closer you're going to get to him because yes. you start knowing him better. Yes. You can spend that time. God, what do you want me to do? Uh -huh. Hallelujah. My life is yours, God. Yes. I tell you, spend that time. Mount up close to God as eagles yeah. mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. Uh -huh. They shall walk and not faint yeah. or become tired. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. That's what it's about. Uh -huh. When you spend time with somebody you get to know, yeah. it's a lot deeper than your favorite cult. I tell you, with something inside yeah. to be able to know. Because if you spend time with God, you renew your mind. You get that mind of Christ. I mean, some things, let me tell you, you know what God's thinking. Yeah. You tell you what, you know what's God. People say, well, Tim, I don't know the will of God. Start here. Yeah. Start spending time here. Yeah. You, you know it's God. Tell you what, Satan don't care about nobody. I don't, I've never had Satan whisper in my ear, why don't you go pray for that person? I never had that happen because he don't care. Why don't you go over and take some bread over there? Why don't you go over there and tell that person that God loves him? You know, he, ain't gonna, he don't care. Okay, but I tell you what, you never know that person might need to hear that right now. We, we, was, in, we was in one of the stores the other day, and, and this lady, uh, we asked her where this product was. You know, and she showed us up here. You know, I said, God bless you. And boy, she stuck and said, you don't hear that very often. You don't hear that. And I thought, how sad is that? I ain't ashamed. I said, God bless you, ma'am. And that's what I mean. I didn't start throwing work. God bless you. I want the best for your life. I tell you what, when you start investing in other people, you know what God does? Turn around and invest in you. Yes. Give and it shall be given. I always took that not just as money, but if you give hope, guess what you get back? You get hope. Yes. You give love, guess what you get back? You give love. I've seen that. Yes. You start encouraging people and I've seen it come back. Somebody encourages you. Yes. I tell you, you know, the one thing about the gospel it's, it's not a selfish Bible. It's not a selfish, it reaches out. Yes. You know, God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. Why would he want anybody to go to hell? You want all your children, all your children to come home. Right. I remember one time we went to Six Flags. 
and, and my sons, and, and two of them kind of went over here, and the rest of them was with us. So I didn't know where they was, went and got security. Try to find out what was they wearing. I can't remember all that, know what they looked like, you know, <laughs> and all the people down at Six Flags. And so uh, that one of them come down there, and I remembered, I know it probably wasn't the best thing to say, but one thing I try to always do is be real with God. You know, whether or not it makes sense, everybody, knows. well, I don't know if you should have said that. Well, I did say it. I can't take it back. You know, <laughs> I said, and I remember I had three sons, but I remember right there in Six Flags, St. Louis, I said, I'm sorry, God, that is not good enough because I got four sons and I need them all to come home. Uh, I'm sorry, probably wasn't the best thing to say, but I'm telling you what, here come the fourth one walking down there. And I ran up to him and I'm hugging him and kissing him. <laughs> You know, security's walking up. I'm good now because they're all home. Yeah. And that's what God wants. He wants all of his kids to come home. Yeah. All the ones that love. He wants them. You know, one thing about heaven, the one thing about heaven, you know, nobody's going to be there don't want to be there. You know, right. you're not hogtied and dragged up there. No. You know, he wants somebody that wants to worship. He seeketh such to worship him in spirit and truth. Yes. Isn't that interesting? In spirit. That, that spirit that comes up to God every day. But he wants it in truth, too. Yes. You can't lie to God. People try to do that. How are you going to lie to God when he already knows it's in your heart? Yeah. That don't make no sense. Yeah. You know, try and do something undercover and everything else. Yeah. Well, I'm going to hide from God. How are you going to hide from God? Yeah. Like my mom used to that old term, dipping and diving and doing all this stuff. You can't be doing all this stuff and think you're going to get away. Yeah. You might get away down on this side. In the earthly realm, but I'm telling you, one day you're going to meet your maker. How are you going to explain that to him? One person said, uh, Evangelist on TV, he said, think about what you do, that God's up in heaven, and he's watching an IMOC screen of your life. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so you see this big old screen up here. I tell you, if you've been to IMAX theater, ain't nothing you can hide on that screen, brother. I mean, that thing is huge, right? Kind of wraps around you, and it sounds deep. And God's seeing all this. Now, you want him to see a good picture or a bad picture. A lot of, a lot of those decisions are like, we got to decide how we're going to act. Because every day there's time. I'm telling you what, there's time. One time we went through McDonald's. And I, I gave a lady a $10 bill for me and my daughter. And guess what she gave me change back? She gave me change back for 20 And my daughter looked at me. And, you know, you can kind of look and say, well, that's a blessing. They ain't no blessing. They ain't our money. That's what it is. Now, you got a time. That's, that's where those things come. Are you going to be honest or not be honest? Because that would mess up her drawer and stuff like that. She might get fired over. So we stop. No, this ain't mine. This ain't mine. Because you got to stand for God. It's those little things. Because you get, you get honest in those little things. It's amazing what God gets you down the line. But if you dishonest in those little things, God remembers that. Yes. Let me tell you. Yes. Because you know what? He wants his people to act like him all the time. Yes. Right? right? I mean, it's, it's kind of bad news when, when Christians kind of get in the car and they got the bumper sticker. You heard that? God bless you. And they're driving less than, this, less than God would have them drive, let me tell you. You know? That's kind of a bad testimony. You know, when they're, when they're driving this and saying all this, all these gestures, don't they realize what people see around you? That may be the only Christ they see at that point. You know, how you act makes such a difference. And these words that come out of your mouth, they always want to praise. Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. What does that say? His praise. Those powerful words. I love that song. We, we, we tend to sing it, sing it more at Christmas about any time. But oh, come let us adore. We need to sing it all year long. Because we ought to adore Christ. Think what he's done for us. And I tell you what, the thing about I love about God is that, you know what? He loves us more and more and more every day. Amen. You know, that, that is so powerful. Even when we're hurting, he still loves you. I remember one time I was going through some things, buddy, and, and you know, you're lying in bed and it looks like the whole world. And you, have you ever cried enough that you're still crying, but the tears are all used up? Yeah. And you're still crying. Well, I, I, just, I just was laying in bed. And I, and, I, and, I, and I felt the room, and it's just, just what happened to me, and I felt the room kind of get warm, and there's a figure that was standing there in the corner. And I know it was God. I know it was God. And, and like he really spoke to me and said, you know, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. We're going to get through this. 
I love that. We're going to get through this. Because I'm going to be with you. Because the Bible says, for with God, for with God, all things are possible. And the disciples was working with them. God was working with each other. He works with us. Because these are God's hands, right? God uses people. That's what he uses. He uses people in the neighborhood, people to pray. Like when you get to heaven, there's going to be a whole lot of people to pray for you before you was even born. And there's a whole lot of people that kept praying for you. You might have only met them once or God put it on your heart and they could have been praying for you on the other side of the world. And I want you to pray for that young lady over there. Pray for her. You know why? Because God can get his people together and he can pray and he can change the world. And that's what he wants. He wants us to be light. Okay, light is not hidden. Jesus talks about that. You don't put light under a bushel. You, you spread it out so people can see. Why does he say light? So, he, so people can see where they're going. There's a lot of people in darkness that have no idea which direction to go. Right. But you know what? We're going to take their hand and lead them in the right direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I've got to wrap this up tonight. Would y'all stand, please? Would y'all stand? Glory to God. God... You are good. What can we say about your goodness? Is that, Lord, you keep giving. You keep giving. Lord, you know, it's it's like we just so undeserve in all your goodness. But you know what? We belong to you. We are your children. And as your children, as a good father, you're going to take care of us. And as good children... We want to be obedient to your cause. Whatever you would have us do, whatever you'd have us do, difficult or not, let us say yes and amen. Yes, Father, I will do what you ask me to do. Why? Because I know you have our best interests in mind. You have more blessings in store. Paul said, ear, ear hasn't heard. I haven't seen what's in store for those who love God. And think about it. There's a great future ahead. We just need to stay on the train track and keep moving forward. It's no time for us to be derailed. It's time for us to move forward. Why? Because we have the great engineer driving the train. That's why. Hallelujah. So we want to praise you tonight. We want to thank you tonight. We want to watch over every soul in this church. Everybody that's here. All their families, Lord. That, Lord, the healing that needs to take place, that you would heal them, you would touch them, Lord, and you watch over us as we go to our homes and continue to bless our lives. So every moment, whether we're in the house or out of the house of God, we're going to praise you and we're going to lift you up and we're going to say amen and amen. Hallelujah. You're the wonderful Lord and our wonderful Savior, the God of all gods, the Lord of all lords, the King of all kings, our Savior. Jesus Christ, and we pray amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, you're dismissed. Hallelujah.